There's been a lot of talk on YouTube lately about a practice called the dopamine detox or dopamine fast. And it was originally invented by the creator of a YouTube channel called Improvement Pill back in November 2018. In late 2019, early 2020, the practice once again, perhaps even became more mainstream this time of sorts when the California psychiatrist Dr. Cameron Seppa wrote a LinkedIn article about it and then that article went viral. Since we've seen YouTubers like Andrew Kirby, Alex Becker make videos about the topic and even the New York Times itself reporting on it. So all of this begs the question, how does a dopamine detox work? Does the science check out? And if the science doesn't, which not to foreshadow a little bit too much here, but let's say the science doesn't check out. What would explain the number of proponents this practice has if we can assume that they're not all making it up? I'm gonna get into this in this video today, but first, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so because I make videos like this at least once a week and your support would mean the world. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, AKA chemical messenger in the brain that plays a vital role in many essential functions such as memory, attention, and motivation. Colloquially, however, we know dopamine to be the pleasure chemical or the pleasure hormone because it gets released every time we anticipate doing something rewarding or pleasurable. The evolutionary function of this, of course, is that this ensures that we are more likely to repeat certain behaviors that go on to ensure the survival of our species. Behaviors such as eating high calorie foods or mating, trying to keep this PG, of course. And so that's why we find things like eating chocolate cake, playing video games, and you know, that highly rewarding and pleasurable. The problem is in our day-to-day hyper-connected lives, it's become way too easy for us to get dopamine. And with a surplus of dopamine, our body will naturally want to bring things back to a level of homeostasis. And it'll do this by reducing the number of dopamine receptors we have. Fewer dopamine receptors means less dopamine is absorbed into the system. With fewer dopamine receptors, the things that we require to function as healthy and contributing members of society, things like going to the gym or paying your taxes or even getting getting your work done. These tasks can become increasingly difficult from the perspective of somebody whose dopamine system is out of whack. And so the practice of a dopamine detox goes, or at least the logic of it goes like this, that if for a certain period of time, if you were to avoid pleasurable activities or rewards for let's say a week or two, you will allow your body to regulate its dopamine system back to the way things were prior to your stimuli overflow of eating chocolate cake every day and playing video games too much. You know, things we do in our day-to-day hyper-connected lives. I should also mention social media is also one of the biggest culprits. And in so many ways, you know that feeling you get when you don't check your phone? That behavior is akin to the behavior of an addict craving his drug. So from the way that I described it, this practice kind of sounds like it makes sense, doesn't it? At least at a very high level. In application, you get a whole range of different ways in which the practice is applied. Everything from no technology after 6 p.m. on Sundays to no technology, no games, no delicious foods for a week every three months to even some people for an entire month taking it upon themselves to avoid eye contact with other people and flash photography. Yeah. Disregarding the most extreme of applications, how well does a dopamine detox actually work? Contrary to popular belief, depriving yourself from rewards or pleasurable activities for a day, a week, or even two weeks isn't going to do much to regulate your dopamine system. While there is validity to resetting your dopamine system back to like a, a baseline default mode. Most experts agree that this is a practice that takes place over the course of many months. And usually if you are addicted to something, if you avoid it over the course of many months, you can maybe get your dopamine system back to a level of where it was at before you became an addict of that substance. But apparently our dopamine system is meant to be dynamic in nature and it's constantly changing and adapting according to what our body needs. Neurotransmitters are synthesized on demand and stored in vesicles, aka little packages inside the cell in preparation to be released. According to neuroscientist Dr. Kim Hellmans, if the cells are firing, they are released and more 
dopamine will be synthesized in preparation. If the cells are not firing, the dopamine will still be there, waiting to be released. In other words, going on a dopamine fast isn't going to have a noticeable impact on your dopamine levels. And Dr. John Grohal, the founder of Psych Central, believes that the appeal of a dopamine fast is based on our perhaps overly simplistic beliefs about how the brain works. Dr. Kent Barrage, a professor of psychology and neuroscience at the University of Michigan, believes that those who purport benefits from going on a dopamine fast are actually benefiting from practices of mindfulness instead. A faster who commits to avoiding alcohol, social media, pleasurable distractions in our day-to-day -day lives, this person is essentially practicing mindfulness. And if I were to repeat to you what the benefits of so-called dopamine fasting are, they're going to strike you as eerily similar to the benefits of mindfulness. Benefits such as clarity of cognition, increased focus, increased attention, and an increased ability to regulate your emotions. So in conclusion, dopamine fasting, at least based on the parameters that we've been given, this won't do anything to regulate our dopamine system. And regulating your dopamine system is really something you should only be concerned about if you are addicted to something even social media, if you've gotten to a point where you have an internet addiction, for example, then practicing more mindfulness in your life and having extended periods of avoiding the stimuli that you're addicted to, that's gonna do you some good. But for everybody else, the concept of a dopamine fast seems to be pretty extreme. The science of it doesn't really check out. And those who purport benefits from this practice are really just benefiting from mindfulness. And you know, as well as I know, that we could all stand to benefit from more mindfulness in our lives. That's it for today's video. Please consider giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't already. And say, my back is killing me. Did you hear that? I think I'm gonna go get a massage, which ironically is not something that I'd be able to do if I were to truly go on a dopamine fast. But if I wanted to do breathing exercises and ground myself in the present moment while getting a massage, I'd be able to do that. And I think that'd be mindfulness. And I feel like that'd be good for me. It's just one of those examples of sort of just taking the essence of a practice and figuring out for yourself what's valid, what's not. Because I'll be honest with you, at the beginning of this video, prior to doing the research, I thought I was just gonna make a video about what a dopamine detox was and how cool it was and to lend my hat into this fad. But now we've come to a different product for this video. So anyways, I'm going on and on. I'll see you guys in my future videos.